Yeah, it's a bit dark in my room at night, but I have a solution. The latest Counter-Strike update had this patch note, which allows you to control how CS2 runs on a PC with a processor that has different types of cores. How do you know if this applies to your PC? Well, just go to here in the options of CS2, and if this option is visible, then it applies to your PC. Otherwise, ignore this video, but still watch it and smash that subscribe button. Obviously, you want Counter-Strike using the fastest cores available in your PC because they'll deliver the fastest frame rates. So I tested it using my Intel 3900K processor, which you can see just here. Actually, no, this is a Ryzen. My processor has eight fast P cores and 16 slower E cores. And enabling this option, there was a difference of up to 10 to 15%, both in the average and minimum frame rates. That truly is a figure not to be trifled with. I tested a benchmark map first, simply because the results I got on here were super consistent every time and it made any differences that these options made obvious. The average was significantly better, the lows were measurably better too, and the CPU utilisation actually dropped, with it now only using the fast P core parts of the processor and not the slower efficiency cores at all. Wait a sec, not using the efficiency cores results in better power efficiency? What's going on here? Well, contrary to popular belief, Intel's E-Cores are not intended to be power efficient. They are space efficient, with four of them being the same physical size as one of Intel's faster performance cores. Apparently, even Valve gets confused with this distinction, as they've labelled these as being power efficient cores. Valve, please fix. In certain tasks and conditions, I think they can be more power efficient, but when all you want is balls to the wall performance, these E-Cores seemingly shit the bed and can go fuck themselves. So yeah, enabling these new options results in better performance and superior power efficiency. Win-win. So that's good news. I got similar results from forcing only P cores on, and from prioritising them but allowing for E cores to be used should I run out of P cores, which obviously I didn't because I had eight of these mothers and that's a lot. But benchmarks are only one thing. It doesn't mean that in practice you're still going to see this kind of improvement as you play. However, as I try testing more and more realistic scenarios, more variables appear which could potentially throw off my findings. So just know that changing this option can make a difference to your frame rate, but don't be surprised if things get a little bit more fuzzy from here on out. And also a little bit more ESL sponsored. I next tested with bots, again in a rather controlled environment where they duked it out in an arms race on baggage for five minutes. And here, for some reason, only the performance cores only option worked better, with the performance priority one performing more similarly to the default option again, while still using less processing power overall, so it's like a weird hybrid of the two settings. And last I endured about an hour of deathmatch on a busy server of Dust2, cycling between the different settings every match because changing this option requires a restart every time. So it's a lot harder to test like this, and every minute of benchmarking I did yielded very different performance outcomes, depending on where I was in the map, how busy the fights were that I engaged in, and so on. But this is about as close to a real game of Counter-Strike as I can attempt to test, so there. Overall though, because I played so much deathmatch and got shot in the back so many times, incredibly all these results balanced out and the priority and PCOS only settings performed measurably better than the default setting did. Just like in the benchmark at the start. So this is joyous news, an update that improves the stock performance of the game in actual gameplay, provided you're gaming in CPU limited situations using certain types of processors. Previously, achieving this same level of performance boost would have required manually configuring which cores the game would use with something like Process Lasso or the Task Manager or by launching CS2 with custom commands and uh, all this stuff is bad. The best way I found to do this manually was to literally disable the cores and threads in the BIOS of your PC itself. But none of that is required anymore since now you can just click this button, choose this, and that should handle CS2 beautifully. Anyway, the best way to know if you're being CPU limited is to look at your GPU utilization, and if it's less than 100%, then you're either being limited by your CPU or by VSync or some kind of frame rate limiter that you have active that you didn't know about. 
We're at an awkward time for these processors, and things will only get better, hopefully. Intel rolled out an APO program for their 14000 series, which I don't have, which optimises how it performs in certain games. And as more and more processors get these different types of cores, they'll be forced to be optimised better for use in games and in Windows applications in general. It just takes time. AMD aren't immune to this tomfoolery. Unlike Intel, AMD's processors can use multiple separate chiplets, and communicating between these different sections of the same processor can also increase latency and decrease frame rates. This was a problem back when Ryzen was first released, but it's being tackled the same way as Intel's, and has improved over time, as well as support for these types of processors in general. And on top of that, AMD is starting to go down the same route as Intel by having a slower, more cut down core type that will perform worse than their main ones. On paper at least, these still seem like they'll be more powerful than what Intel's doing, but I'm yet to see real world benchmarks of these things so far, so who knows what they'll be like. You'll probably find them in handheld gaming devices first, probably the Steam Deck too. In conclusion, if this option's there, then set it to only use performance cores. If in doubt, or if your processor is weaker and needs all the cores it can get, then maybe just set it to prioritise P cores, but not to rule out the E cores completely, just in case. I mean, test it all for yourself and see what happens. That's what I've been doing all day today, and it's been great fun.